Do you want to get rich? Take over a foreign power, perhaps? What, in real life? That's a bit out of my pay grade, buddy. But instead, I'm going to be doing it in Kenshi, a game as brutal as it is stupid. In today's video, I'll be creating an empire with some questionable exports, and will spend that blood money to then hire an army of mercenaries that will be at my beck and call, for which we will then use to expand our empire, whether the inhabitants of this world like it or not. So, let us begin. Welcome to the world of Kenshi, a game that takes place many years after a rather unknown calamity befell this world, and that left it, well, a bit shit. Now this landmass is spread between many different groups, like religious extremists, slave traders, homeless crack addicts, aliens, robots, and the North. We don't talk about the North. Now, our character today is none other than Lug, just a regular run-of-the-mill man, but with a bit of a twist. Also, he is a Scorchlander, which makes him much better at stealing things. I would consider this racist, but considering that almost every character in this godforsaken world would have dabbled in larceny at some point, I think it's alright. And thus, we begin the game in the hub. The hub is an interesting little starting city, mainly because it's teeming with vagrants and convicts from the holy nation. And when the homeless crack addicts are the ones being nice to you at the start of the game, you know it all goes downhill from here. My first action is to go into the inn to see what's up, only to get into a verbal altercation with a bar patron that soon becomes physical. Just then, however, a group of dust bandits were wandering through the town and chose to fight on my behalf, allowing me to pick up all their items and equipment free of charge, fetching me a nice little sum after selling it. Realizing what a great money-making opportunity this was, I began waiting for conflicts to break out on the edge of the hub so I can scrounge around the battlefield, picking at the corpses like a little rat. After a small time in that... <clears throat> honorable profession, I make a decent amount of change and decide to hire my first meat shield, that being Gorsum. And since we're both still fleshy sacks of meat, we decide to do what everyone does on New Year's and buy an overpriced gym membership to train once and never again. And that's because we begin our journey to Squin. Squin is shit controlled, meaning that there will be a lot of racial profiling, and for good reason, as one of the first things I decide to do is commit a sneaky little bit of break and entry. And it goes about as well as you'd expect. But that's okay, as once I get out through legitimate means, we meet the next member of our party, that being Ruka, who by all means is a crucial part of any playthrough. Together with my two friends now, we set off in search of a suitable place to call home. However, I have to admit that when I say decide where to settle, it's a bit of a lie, as it's pretty much a no-brainer in my eyes. So let me explain our options. For some reason in my idiot brain, I decided that the border zone, an area that's generally pretty good for most things, including having two massive cities to buy my legal substances, would be too easy. So with the border zone crossed off the list, that leaves us with four options. If I go north, I will have to deal with the aforementioned religious zealots harassing me into participating in prayer day, but that would be for naught, as the moment they saw that I didn't treat minorities like shit, they'd be busting down the door. If I went west, then I need to deal with the Shek, a warring country that are so doped up on their ADHD meds that whenever they aren't fighting each other, they're fighting you. To the south, we can enter the swamps, a place of complete lawlessness, where the biggest threat isn't the people, but instead getting there without being a victim of the variety of fauna that's out for your bussy. So that leaves us with one location, Shem. Traveling the lands of Kenshi is a very dangerous ordeal. When you don't have some starving bandit trying to mug you for your last Slim Jim, you will need to deal with some kind of patrol, or even worse, the creatures. However, through the trials and tribulations, we make our way to a suitable location for which we can start our drug empire. Shem is a location that is a double-edged sword of sorts, as while we won't be harassed by any form of government, the roaming bands of bandits are let loose to do as they please, making the initial phases of setting up here in absolute pain, as day after day we would constantly be raided by some group seemingly for the hell of it, we would get consistently beaten and then need to spend numerous days in a coma recovering, until a point where we finally learnt how to make barricades, so we built a big beautiful wall to keep those starving bandits out. But of course, every drug kingpin requires a good mule, and I know of a certain someone who would be a great candidate. Thus, Lug begins his perilous trek to the capital of the Fog Islands to find said candidate, that being Beep. Now why did I go halfway across the map to find this specific character? Because it's Beep. 
Look at this adorable sack of bones that literally has nothing good about him other than his optimism and will to survive, which is like that of a child's. And like a child, the moment he gets brought back to base, he's immediately put to work in the mines. And now this hut is starting to look a bit more like a home. But speaking of homes, I know where yours is, and I'm approaching it at a breakneck speed. You cannot run, but you can be saved. Like the video and subscribe to the channel, and maybe then I'll only take your newborn as sacrifice. After a slight bit of base progression where we leveled up our walls and developed slightly better infrastructure, I then decide to set out and visit our neighbors in the swamp. Now like I said earlier, the swamp is a very dangerous place, as around the corner there always seems to be something trying to kill you. Very similar to Australia, and like Australia, this ever looming danger leads to a breakdown of civilized society. However, this works in my benefit, as many of the villagers just have shops that sell crack right out in the open. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, it's because I'm broke, and I need some quick cash. And if I can't make my own cocaine to sell just yet, then I guess I'm gonna steal someone else's. And so, I pick my poor target, who has a store chock full of illicit substances. After pinching from him the first time, he understandably isn't too fond of me and attempts to put a stop to my tomfoolery. However, it is too late, as I already made off like a bandit with all his drugs. But probably high on something himself, he then proceeds to chase me through the jungle like a madman to get his merchandise back, but he is too slow for lug. I then travel to the neighboring area of Flats Lagoon by passing through whatever the hell this is, and we will find many traders willing to buy our drugs at a massive 400% markup. And thus, a new ecosystem formed, where I would buy more recruits and resources for our drug den. And when I started running low, I'd just go and rob this poor trader, trying to make a living in this shithole of all his drugs, and then sell them at massive profit. But some of you at this point might be wondering, why make any of my funky exports at all if I can just keep stealing and selling for massive profits? And that's because most of my travel time involves going through this shitty Louisiana Bayou cosplay to come to this backwater in the middle of nowhere to steal from this poor dude. Why risk the bolt in the ass when I can make it from the safety of my glorious walls? And another reason is because I don't want our entire drug empire to be built up from the struggle of this one guy and his seemingly infinite supply of sus dust. But before we continue, allow me to talk about my travels. In search of new connections and potential buyers, I send Lug out to explore the surrounding areas. After handing off the merchandise, I head south to Morn, and the first thing I notice about Morn is the ominous looking structure in the middle that's currently locked off to the public. Now that piques my interest. So after employing my first robot companion, we both break into the structure, revealing the reason why it was locked. That being the big fucking gorilla just chilling inside. I apparently was supposed to hear this from some of the NPCs in town, however listening isn't really my strong suit. And thus, Lug and Elamp just sit idly by while the entire town fights this one gorilla. After causing seemingly the most devastating incident in recent memory for this town, I am then praised and given some grog for my efforts. Later on in the game, as we were trying to progress the tech tree, we ran out of items. Oh no. So Lug, in his infinite wisdom, decided to confide in the Kenshi wiki, where he found out that a place north of the base known as the Scrapyard provides everything the base will need, so he decided to pay a visit. What he did not check, however, was the weather forecast, as he would have noticed that there was a very high chance of acid rain, and by very high chance, I mean 100% of the time. The only races immune to acid rain are robots and hivers, for which Lug is neither, so he has a very fun time on his journey. Once Lug gets there, he's greeted by a robot trader selling almost everything I could think of, including weapons and armor, which will be very handy later on. Speaking of later on, it's now later on. Yeah, I did a little mining off camera. It wasn't that interesting, I swear. But let me catch you up to speed. I researched. I researched so hard, in fact, that I learned more about drugs than a retirement home chemist. Meaning that I didn't actually learn shit, I just threw a bunch of ingredients in and hoped for the best. I ended up with a rather steady supply of cocaine and methamphetamine. Oh, oh dear, how did those end up there? These would be ferried over to Flats Lagoon and sold at a staggering price, to the point where demand couldn't keep up with my supply. But you best believe I didn't lower my prices one cent. In fact, with these newfound riches, my boys became equipped with the best gear around. A fitting posse for a fitting drug lord. 
But there's one thing I haven't done yet, and it's something that's very important and essential for any up and coming big dealer, and that is territorial expansion. And here's the deal, I like the hub. It's a very central location and a key spot for me expanding my supply routes. But what I really don't like is all the stinky homeless people who don't pay taxes and the weeaboos that protect the place. So I'm gonna kill them, both. Well, that was remarkably easy, but it's not over yet, as I have another target in mind. Someone who hates drugs so much that they completely outlawed them in their entire nation. Not good for business, but something else about him is that he really hates minorities. And that's just not on. We might be a band of extremely violent and bloodthirsty drug peddlers, but at least we're not racist. So we go and kick his ass, and then we haul him all the way back home and chuck him in a cell. Think you can cage me? The Lord Incarnate? Heretic. The children of Okran will come for me, and you will be smited for your wicked ways. Huh.